Hey guys, I'm here this morning with Ben Lee, which is pretty exciting. I've always been a massive fan of Ben um, and even bigger fan when I realised he was building an Oterra business and I saw him speak at convention. Actually, originally realised he was sitting at my table, the very first global convention, and I was like super nervous sitting across from like, that's Ben Lee, that's Ben Lee. <laughs> he probably thought I was a complete nutcase, but he is an absolute legend and I wanted to get him on today to share a little bit about um, building trust and what makes people actually want to buy from you. So fire away, Ben. I know you just channel things in and, and go with go with your gut. So what do you think on that topic? Well, firstly, thank you for everything you're saying and thank you for having me. I love doing anything with you. Um, I'm very always inspired by the way you lead and share from your heart and with such uh, spontaneity and authenticity. Um, for me, I think... What jumped out to me with the sentence you said when you wrote the subject for this was it's almost like we have to redefine what selling is. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes somebody want to buy? When I think about sales, I think of being a singer and selling a song. I don't mean selling it like clicking the 99 cent download on iTunes. I mean emotionally selling it. Uh, so I, I, from 14 years old, I was writing songs and I'd write them in my bedroom and they'd have a certain type of emotional reality in the moment for them. And then I'd stand on a stage or record them. And my job was always to sell the reality of my creative expression in that moment. So when I think of selling, I think of it as creating a bridge between your truth and the truth of another person. And someone buying it, it doesn't mean they're gullible. It means, oh, yeah, I buy that. I buy that that's real. You know, I buy that person's, uh, the way they're expressing what their ethics are. I buy that that person really cares about what they care about. So buying and selling can also be used in terms of how authentically do we read the intention of the person we're dealing with or how authentically are we conveying our intention? So that's kind of the, uh, if that if that isn't veering too much away from what you were originally intending, I think that's really key, that when we talk about selling, what we're really talking about is are we ad adequately able to convey our heart to the person that we're sharing with? Because if they if they are buying us, if they believe who we are, then the actual exchange, the commercial exchange, is sort of a, almost a side issue. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really important is that the person has felt you in a deep way. Like right now, I am selling to you. I'm not selling a thing. I'm not selling an essential oil. Everyone listening is already enrolled in doTERRA. I'm not trying to sell them oils. I'm not trying to sell them some program. I'm just trying to sell my viewpoint, which is what I believe, and I'm hoping that whether or not I'm even articulating it clearly, I hope that you, the people watching are buying that I authentically believe where I stand in this moment. And that's the key to everything. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So on a fundamental, like on a practical level, how yeah. do you then do that when you are selling, say, essential oils? Or like, for, for example, Ben, I know you, you did buy my tapping e-course and what made you kind of, I guess, make that decision? Or what do you think makes people's decision to buy essentials from you in particular? Yeah. Okay, let's use your tapping course as an example, right? I, knowing you and knowing your passion for Brad Yates and his tapping and knowing your passion for empowering others that are not just directly benefiting you, right? Like you gave a mentor call to my team when we were going for Diamond that had no personal benefit to you. You vibe on helping people achieve their dreams, right? Yeah. So in your selling of that course, I felt it to be very authentic. I saw the intention as being very pure. You were like, man, this is kind of crazy. You tap on your body and say these things. I don't really know the sides of it, but it works and I love it and I want to share it with you. And so mm -hmm. what I bought really in, in my whole experience of knowing you, but in that moment when you put that course up, I believed your authentic desire was not to sell me a course. 
It was to share something that had changed your life, right? Mm. So I think the same thing should happen whether we're selling essential oils or music or whatever it is, that our goal should not be the selling of the thing. That's the vehicle, right? Yeah. The goal should just be like creating amazing positivity in the world and changing people's lives and having these authentic moments of magical connection. And all of that may sound very like airy fairy and esoteric, but on a practical level, when you set up a sales funnel, you have a lead page and a mailing list or you do a Facebook live or whatever it is, right? If you, if you kind of break down logically why you're doing it, you're being like, okay, I'm creating the lead page to capture email addresses so that I have a mailing list, so that I can create exposures to my product or service, so that I can convert 50% of them eventually into, you know, there's all of that. But if you're not getting down to it at a fundamental level, it's so that I can have a reason. It's an excuse to connect with someone and maybe we can change each other's lives. Like that at a very practical level is what you can be thinking when you get on that Facebook Live or when you set up that lead generator. That like, I really believe the intention we put behind these things is like super important and carrying that into these practical data. Like you're amazing at sharing these tools with people. I don't think there's anything I can say. I mean, you're literally running a social media course. I, I don't think there's any practical thing I can tell you that you haven't already told your team. But I think for me, you know, I started making music at 14 years old. I could not play my instrument. None of us could. We were a terrible band. But what <laughs> did people like about my band, Noise Addict? They liked our attitude. Like ultimately yeah. what we were selling was our chutzpah. It was our attitude, you know? Like we just like wanted to get out there and do it. And that vibe, people wanted to be part of that. So the primary thing I think that, yeah, Alice is saying it's always about helping and serving. And that's true. Um, the one thing I would tweak to that is it, it's also about you getting your needs met in, in a way that's not selfish, but like friendship, right? Like when I connect with somebody, I try not to have like a martyr, like sort of uh, like some kind of like uh, omnipotent attitude that I am the hero that's going to serve you and I can help you meet your needs and I'll get you essential oils and I can change your life. You know, that's very, it's a bit self-important. Mm. I look as like when I connect with someone, we can help each other. Mm -hmm. Like we can enlighten each other and we can share. And that to me is like, so I think service, it's serving them and it's being served through love. Yeah. I think, I think the big thing that I see when I, when I feel like sales may be done not as well as it could is there's a desperate energy that comes across and it's about trying to get and get and take and take from people um, or push something on them. Like when you're just putting up buy oils, buy oils, buy oils, sign up to my course, do this, do that. Um, I don't know, that doesn't make me want to buy. Whereas when there's giving, like I try and give as much high value free content as possible that I know is actually going to make a difference in people's lives, businesses, mindset, um, you know, energetic consciousness, all of that stuff. And when I do that and then I have things like essential oils if they want to buy them or an advanced social media strategy course if people are wanting to learn about the landing pages and the MailChimp follow-up automated series like you were talking about and all of those things, then, you know, people can then have that, have that develop trust with you because you have given so much. Um, and, yeah, it's that reciprocal relationship and then they, they have that energetic exchange of money to give back to you for something of, you know, incredibly high value that's going to make a real difference to their lives. Yeah, and, and to speak to that, you know, I'm in an industry in music where literally our product has lost commercial value, right? Like yeah. I've lived through this kind of historic business shift where we had a product that was worth $19 or whatever it was for a CD, $25, and yeah. it's now worth nothing. Um, mm. But get on the internet and look at all the music that's being made and shared. It's being made with some kind of faith that the phone will ring. If you are adding value, the phone will ring. 
And I music is like a beautiful example of that where if you are selfish and if you're like, well, did I I did one Facebook Live and I didn't enroll one person from it. If you're thinking like so like keeping track of all the numbers in that way, it's almost like being like nitpicking or like, you know, being too, uh, just being greedy with your energy. It's not going to add up. It happens over time when people perceive you as a generous person that is not going to take advantage of them. I mean, we're really talking about building credibility in your community. And it's really interesting. There are some people that come into something like doTERRA or a business opportunity and they do well all the way and, and it's well, well read away and it's thought of as, oh, they had a good network and that's a very cold word for it. You know, mm-hmm. some people have just built credibility through being an honourable person in the community and when they come and say, I've got something I want to share, people listen because it has historical precedent to it. So I think yeah. it's not that important. We don't have to have come in with that, but we do today need to start generating credibility and not with a cold of like, not the cold thing of like, I need to, credi- to have credibility to generate sales, but it is how yeah. we can achieve anything in the world. When you look at the great leaders, the great change makers of society, they are people that built credibility at grassroots levels. And when they spoke, their words had power and their words had gravity because they paid their dues in that way. So I think that's kind of what I really see eye to eye with you on that. Um, you know, yeah. just adding me, value. Yeah. I had built my credibility, I guess, before doTERRA. Not, and you've done that too for, for a very long time. So I'd been doing it through the Heart Foundation petition and birth and breastfeeding advocacy and all of the other things that I was blogging and sharing about. And I was on Centrelink at the time for two years, but generating that trust and credibility because I was passionate, not because I was trying to necessarily get get something. And then when the essential oils came into my life and I had very powerful experiences with them and the woman that shared with me said, you know, there's a business opportunity involved with this. I immediately wanted to share because of the powerful experiences that I had. And I'd had other people message me throughout those two years that I was an activist trying to get me to sell this and that and all these other things. So I can make a bit of money, but I couldn't I couldn't do it because the product just didn't resonate with me and I couldn't see myself selling something that I didn't know had incredible value and power to significantly change people's lives. I'm interested to know, Ben, why you decided to build a doTERRA business. Like why are you a doTERRA wellness advocate? Yeah. I, I think for me, I've always liked business. Uh, I remember when I was in year five, we love nerds. Remember those candies? Nerds, those little sour ones. And um, yeah. and we all wanted them. And they were they were 35 cents, I remember, from the local shops. And I'd go up there and I'd buy a stack of them and bring them to school and sell them for two bucks a box. <laughs> and um, I remember the principal calling me in and going, Benjamin Lee, very entrepreneurial, but you can't do that here. And... It was interesting because there was no scam in it. Like everyone knew what they cost, but I was providing yeah. need and I saw it as like they were paying me for my time and my effort. And it, it also felt very like on the level to me. It was not a product that's particularly good for you, so I wouldn't want to build a career on it. But um, but I liked business and I liked that idea of being tapped into, you know, what is the landscape and how can you serve people? And as I got my interests and particularly in natural health and psychology and all the spirituality and everything I studied over the years, I think I have been looking for opportunities where I could bring all parts of myself to them Mm -hmm. and particularly in business. Um, And I'm not, I mean, doTERRA is not the be all and end all for me. I look at it as one of my businesses Mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm, I'm only 30, I'll be 39 this year. Like I feel like hopefully I have a long life ahead of me and I intend to be practicing and flexing that entrepreneurial muscle all over, you know, in a lot of different areas. But being a musician, I didn't go to university. I've had this natural impulse towards entrepreneurialism, but I didn't get that training. And I've looked at doTERRA as like, it's like going to uni. I mean, it's unbelievable how much you learn the skills you learn in doTERRA, you can take into any business. They are fundamentally, like, I was thinking about it today. 
like what it means to begin with a product or a company of integrity. That's number one. The intention that you go into it with, your why, your desire to really serve and help people, consistency, being a converted user yourself of whatever it is, like a real belief, like everything we're learning, um, particularly in the consistency area. I think a lot of people come into doTERRA, they're a bit wooed by the freedom of it and they get a bit of a rude awakening that it's not really going to work unless you're consistent. Like even though you don't have a boss, you kind of got to be your own boss. And that is like the number one thing to learn for any entrepreneurial activity. So all of that is a long way of saying that it's just become this beautiful experiential training ground where I can feel these muscles in me that as an artist, like we're told not to care about business or that it's uncool or that you're like, you're sort of, I don't know, like it's just like not, it's not seen as real or something, which I never really agreed with. But so I never in your industry right like you have managers and producers and it's yeah you meant to give all that to other people and you just think about the art just think about the art and for me i think art and business they're like they're the same thing we should be doing our businesses artistically and we should be doing our art with a keen business sense you know because it's all part of the same thing of how do we communicate who we are to the wider world love it so I had an interesting comment on one of my posts the other day. I was posting about the social media and sales with soul equals and someone commented like, you can't have sales with soul. Like why, why are you even using, it can't be in the same sentence. The very word sale means no soul basically. And I found that an interesting comment. Um, and I was at, at a conference the other day learning about sales and mindset around sales because a lot of people feel icky and gross about salesmen. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's like, yeah. I can't I can't sell anything I'm not a salesperson you know there's some sort of gross kind of mindset around it being filthy and scammy and sleazy um and for me like the guy that was talking at this conference said sale people literally only buy stuff because they think they will be better off if they've bought it so Mm -hmm. it's not about having to scam and sleaze and push things on people literally just sharing value and sharing worth with people and connecting with them on that soul level. And I believe, like, I, I'm not a salesperson and I, I'm not a business person either, but I haven't done any qualifications. I've never run a business in my life. And for me, it's just about sharing high value content that's going to make a real difference, connecting with people. Like the tribe that I've built, you know, these people are now my friends and a lot of people that I met just online are now platinum and diamond and blue diamond in my business. And they're people that have just followed me on Facebook and connected with me. And then I've developed that relationship both further online and face-to-face in person. But it was just interesting to me, this perception and mindset that there is no soul in sales. Mm. Mm. I, I, yeah, I mean, I've obviously, I feel the same. Um, I think one of the complicated things is we all have these shadow sides of us that can be operating simultaneously. So one of the things I think people get overwhelmed by is, okay, we say in an ideal world, when I sell something, I'm just serving them. I'm just trying to help them get value, you know, whatever. Like we use a phrase like that. And then someone enrolls someone in doTERRA and they have a little voice in their head going, oh, that's great. I get the fast start. And, uh, and that's going to be rank advance. And then they feel guilty about that because they've had, they've sort of been told that that might not be the right attitude to have or something. So there's a bit of shame over, you know, one of the things we're doing in our business that's interesting is we're sort of reprogramming a cultural narrative about sales. So I think we have to realize we are the living petri dishes for this experiment. And it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, we also are going to have ulterior motives at times that we need to purify and we need to confront. And we and when someone says, when that man says, sales has no soul, I hear like a world of pain in his own experiences when he's tried to sell what he has to mm-hmm. offer the world. And he sounds like he's been really disappointed in himself um, because he's noticed his own darker motives. And, hey, that stuff's there, guys. You know, like 
when we talk about being out in the field, you know, being on on the ground doing this work, sharing oils, playing music in pubs, you know, doing stuff, not the glamorous stuff, being out there, yeah. doing it, you're going to notice all of those different voices. And there are, like, ancient generational, like, bad synaptic connections that we have all these ideas about sales is, you know, Shylock from Merchant of Venice and, you know, all these kind of things. Um, so before I get too far off topic, um, the important thing is we have to be courageous in realizing when we talk about doing a new type of business, it's not an external thing with, I am going to change the world and teach people a new way of business. It's I'm going to change myself. I'm going to work each day to come from the heart and ignore the darker, you know, voices that are reaching out their hand to me about the reasons to do this. I'm going to keep going towards the light here. And it is, it's a daily practice, like purifying our own attitudes to what sales can be. Yep, I love that. Ah, <laughs> it's brain to talk about this stuff because you kind of get, I don't know, some of the some of the stuff lands in your consciousness. And I think a big thing is a lot of people in doTERRA are spiritual people. And for a long time there's this been this consciousness that you that money is the root of all evil and that to be spiritual you have to have no money at all. And I'm like, guys, I can't make as big a difference as I could be making if I'm on Centrelink and having a panic attack about the next bill. Like the difference I'm making now to not only my own life but thousands of other lives and the tens of thousands of dollars that I'm able to donate at this level. Like you invested in a Brad um, Brad and my tapping course. We donated over $8,000 of the proceeds of that to Project Light, which is working with Indigenous people, um, Indigenous Australians and refugees to provide trauma healing and to, you know, make a massive difference in lives in Australia, in a very rural, remote part of Australia, something I'm very, very passionate about. I can't do that if I'm poor. Like, I can't, I can't donate tens of thousands if I'm, you know, making 40 grand a year. Like, it's only the more abundant you become, the more of a difference that you can make. Money does allow bigger differences to be made. Of course, if you are poor and you have nothing, you can still, you know, be of service and make a difference in people's lives, absolutely. But I believe I'm able to compound that difference significantly with the kind of money I'm making in both doTERRA and, and the e-courses that I run now. So I think shifting that mindset is so crucial. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jesse, like the, the doTERRA experience has broadened my sense of what health is mm. in so many ways. And this financial and business aspect is a key part of it. And what's interesting is I went, uh, I did like a songwriting session recently, with amazing writers, you know, great artists. And multiple times during the writing session, some hangups were revealed by them about money, like resentment. Yeah. Um, and I saw myself there 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Like I, mm. I related to where they were, but I had to honestly say I'm not there today. And that when I think of what health is now, I, it's holistic, you know, and this in a way, like you start realizing like, wow, you're, you got to find like minds to collaborate with. Um, because for me, when I think of health, I think of obviously physical health, but I think of emotional health, financial health, spiritual health, artistic health, sexual health, um, ethical health feeling good about my decisions. Um, I, it's such a big, the word health, the wellness, you know, these, is, these have become such broadened terms. And I think that this big healing around business and money that you're talking about is a huge part of, um, without getting too <laughs> esoteric, but this is part of the cosmic purpose of mm. endeavors like the one we're involved in, that we really need updating in our attitude towards finances and business. Like the previous attitude that our parents' generation and grandparents had to do with business made it you either sided with capitalism or you sided with being like a hippie basically and anti-commerce. 
And so capitalism just like ate up the environment. It, 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 it was so destructive because there, was, there wasn't the attempt to sort of hold both seemingly contradictory ideas at once. And I really feel like we're part of something very big. And I don't think doTERRA is the only place it's happening. I think it's happening in all kinds of avenues of um, social entrepreneurism. And um, there's a wonderful podcast I've been listening to by NPR called How I Built This. Uh, we interviews with entrepreneurs. How, how Have you listened to it? What was it? It's called How I Built This. How I Built This. No, I you would listened. love it. You would love it. I subscribe to it every week. It's like it'll be like Richard Branson and the guy who did Tom's and the woman who did Spanx. And, but yeah. what you see is these amazing common threads of like true, the true entrepreneur wants to change the world for the better. You know, and this really is what we're being invited to step into. And this is our training ground. Yeah, love it. Oh, this is like the best chat ever. Thanks for jumping on, Benley. It's just awesome uh-huh. to connect to someone who is like, yes, right where I'm at in that thinking space. So that's really just, just got so much value out of everything you've shared today, Ben. And I I'm love sure. it. Wait, I want to say one more thing. I know we're probably going too long, but... um. The one thing I want to say is, but Jesse, like what's interesting is previously, I think when people look at everything in a success, success continuum, mm-hmm. they would look at your position or the ovens or Tara Bliss or something and go, oh, that's the end of the journey, right? Mm-hmm. Because they see it all as being about, okay, when I can get to making 100 grand a month, then I can basically go on a big holiday, right? That's sort of like what we're sold. We see these billboards with people on beaches all the time like drinking martinis, and it's almost like we're being sold this propaganda of just work really hard, really hard, and then you arrive and you go on the permanent holiday. And I think what I'm excited about with you is um, I think this is the beginning of your journey. This is like where we get to watch someone like Jessie Reimers go, wow, what does she do with a platform? And to me that is so exciting, and there's – so many people in doTERRA who are on their way to that position that I am just thrilled to be sitting on the sidelines watching their show unravel and to be, you know, play out for all of us. So, so I just want to say like, I'm so loving. I think what's ahead of you is greater than what's behind, you know, like you've now created this platform and from here, like you said, you can give so much and, teach so much and demonstrate and love so much so it's really it's an honor to watch it watch it play out thanks ben and i can also take holidays as well definitely exactly. here, but a little bit of that's okay <laughs> not a permanent retirement i can't retire at 26 i would be bored out of my brain <laughs> there is so much that i want to create both in doTERRA but like you've already seen me step out of that as well ben and start teaching about social media and tapping and you know there's so much that i want to share and teach and you know, speak on global stages and just kind of change lives in a whole in a whole bunch of arenas. So I'm pretty excited. Like my big vision, imagine Ben when we have like, you know, hundreds of presidential diamonds and that combined wealth, like millions, billions of dollars. And we can be like, right, what are we gonna mess up today? Like disrupt today. Let's chuck a hundred million into T V advertising and billboards on the truth about XYZ. You know, the possibilities to me are pretty pretty epic and immense about the difference we can make not just when i'm sitting at presidential diamond and there are a few others but you know imagine a huge room full of presidential diamonds just conceptualizing and, and brainstorming and sharing ideas about what massive disruption and, and difference we're going to make in the world pretty epic. love it, love it. <laughs> Exciting times ahead all right, thank you so much, Ben Lee, for taking time out and sharing with us. I've really, really loved this chat. Thanks to everyone that's tuned in. Um, yeah, and have an awesome day. I'll chat to you soon. Can't wait to see you. Bye. Bye.